Hi there. Let's get started on the first little demonstration. I'm just going to call these demonstration videos of how I'm having fun with my fine liners. I want to show you different ways that I'm using these. And I'm going to build a video resource book of how I use the fine line applicators. I'm going to start out showing you something very simple. And that's this netting example down here. Very, very simple netting. And I'm going to show you a, a couple of different ways to use it. I'm going to pull out two of these vertical tags. I'm going to do, I think I'll try to do four different ways of using this netting down here below. And I'll do one on each side of these cards. So let's get started. Later, I have Craft Smart paint mixed with a few drops of Liquitex medium. If you push that little I button wherever it is on your screen, right now they're up at the top of the screen, I have a link to how I fill these. They come empty. You can fill them with the media of your choice. I use Craft Smart white paint or black. I just use a Craft Smart paint. I mix it with airbrush medium. I happen to use Liquitex because that's the brand that I found locally. You may experiment with using other types of media in there. It's just something that you need to experiment with. I use the airbrush medium. I will say that there's no correct formula for this. You have to play it by ear when you're mixing it. Do you want a thin line? Do you want a thick line? What are you trying to accomplish? Do you want to write with it? Do you want to paint with it? There's just, you, you have to use your good artistic judgment when you're filling these bottles. And that's, that's about the best advice I can give you there. But go ahead and take a look at my video on how I fill these. And if you have questions, leave a comment. Unscrew the cap. I usually give the little cap a couple of up and down motions just to make sure that the little needle passageway is clear. It usually is, but I usually go like that. And then I usually, because your first, your first paint out is usually a glob, so I, I usually just... Do a little on to make sure I'm getting a nice line. Just take a piece of scrap paper, a tissue, anything, and just make sure you're getting a nice line on there. Now you'll see that when you start, you get a glob at the top, and then as you draw that line out, you kind of want to get rid of those first dot lines as much as possible. I'm not sure. It takes a lot of practice to do that. I'm still working on it myself. Our goal in this little segment is to do something like this. Just something very plain and simple. This could be done in the background of an art journal page. It could be as in, done as an embellishment on a tag. I'm going to draw a square here or a rectangle. Don't worry if your lines aren't beautiful at first. Mine rarely are. I like the I like the rough nature of these. In fact, I think I can extend this down a little bit more. Let's make it larger. Like this. And then I'll do my documentation here. And then I'm just going to draw some horizontal lines, keep them evenly spaced as much as possible. This one's larger. That just happens. Try to eliminate that beginning dot. If you put your tip down and draw it before you press, squeeze the bottle, I find that it uh, does not leave that beginning dot as much. I'm going to leave that wider at the end. 
these are wider, so what? <laughs> that just is how it happens. Then you're going to draw. Now at this point you could, maybe I'll do that. This paint, it will be wet and it will have ridges. And you could dry this right now while you're, it won't completely dry. You can let it air dry if you want. I find that it is dimensional while it's still wet, but I find that as it dries, it kind of flattens out. And it's shiny while it's still wet. Now, the longer lines are a little bit harder to draw. I find that if I take a piece of, and I'm not sure I can do that on this table here, but if I have a piece of what's paper underneath this hand, it glides easier. But if it, if it wiggles, if you don't get a straight line, I'll tell you, fabric rarely has a straight line. It does when it's being made, but fabric falls in to folds and uneven lines. I think I'm going to make it thicker down here. Just like that. So there is this very, very simple line. Very, very simple. Look, I even got a blotch there. Who cares? This is just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to set this aside as a very simple example for number one. Now, let's go and expand on that. Let's do the same thing here. Whoops, I use my wax paper. I like my wax paper underneath of my hand. It gives that gliding motion. And yes, I had a stop and start there. I don't mind that personally. If you mind it, well, don't stop and start. You can make them wavy like this. This adds a little bit more interest. Keep them still keep them horizontal now let's do the vertical lines just draw it down this way see how this wax paper underneath my hand enables my hand to glide across the table. Without this, my hand wants to catch on this tabletop or napkin, whatever I have under it. doesn't matter what I have under it. Now you may not like a lacy look. This is what I'm starting out with. I'll show you other ways to do it that are not lacy. Maybe you think that's too frilly fancy. Lace is too frilly fa fancy for what your purpose is. There are many, many, many different ways and things that you can do with these fine liners. And that's why I'm doing this video series. But right now, if you want a lacy look, I find that if you just take your paint applicator and put a little dot right in the center, and do that on all four sides. Isn't that fun? And of course on the one below it, you only have to do it on three sides. And beside it on two. And this will build a beautiful lacy look. And this is not hard. This is not hard work. And it's a very forgiving process if your dots are... If your dots are not the same size, doesn't matter unless you're a perfectionist and you want them all the same size. Now I have done this on several different journal pages in the background. Just kind of build on it that way. And I put my dots in the center of the line, and I let one dot act for both squares here. So this dot, 
that I'm putting here, X for this square and for this square. I don't try to put a dot on this side and a dot on that side. It gets a little hard. You could, you certainly could, and it would just be more detailed and actually it would be very pretty, but for right now, we're just keeping this simple. Just a dot on every side. See how that little net design is starting to form? Very intricate. And look, I got a little... That doesn't matter. Just I am a very free-form artist. I do not mind... A lot of mistakes in my work. I mean, some mistakes I will go back and correct when I just absolutely can't stand them. Look, I missed two in there. They, To me, they stand out like a sore thumb. But you'll find that you do that. and You can always go back in and add dots. And later on, we'll get into using different colors and doing different layers. These fine liners are so fun to work with. Actually, we're just, we are drawing with this little bottle of paint. But the way these tips are made just allow you to do things that you really, you can do it with a brush, but it's not as easy. It really makes it a lot easier to do something very pretty like this. Now, as I'm doing this is the middle of June, and I do not have the air conditioner on in my house. We've just had a series of rainy weather, and I just don't like running the air conditioner if I don't have to. So, it's kind of humid in here, so this will dry pretty fast. But isn't that pretty? I think I'll touch this one up a little bit more. Okay, so we've taken something very basic like this. Don't worry about the blotches there. These are just examples. And then we made it very fancy by just adding little dots on there. Isn't that pretty? Now, let's see how dry this is. Now, if I want to know how dry something is, you could take another piece of paper, but I usually just take a towel and I'll press it down that way. I think this is, yeah, I can see some paint on there yet. Let's, and it depends on, you know, because you have the potential of blotching that up. Let's, let's just dry this a little. Okay. I think that's pretty dry. You can take your hand and check to see if any paint comes off on it. That was already there. Let's flip this over. And, yes, that'll happen. Just take some black gesso and gesso it out. Probably was on the back of this. These are just little sample cards. I'll deal with that later. I'll probably put my little documentation on the end of it. Let's do... Let's see. I think I'll have to bind them have to bind them on this side so I want to leave at least a half an inch here so I want to leave a half an inch here but when I flip it I'll have to make this the top side and my documentation will go up here so let's just flip this like that we can put a little black paint on there so that it's kind of bothering me. Just kind of blush it out. For these, it doesn't really matter too much. Okay. So on the back of this one, 
flip it over. We're going to come on about in here. Now I don't I'm going to try to avoid that big dot at the at the start. And what I'm going to do is before I I'm going to draw my needle before I squeeze out of the bottle. And that could work. I it it just depends. I'm still practicing with that myself, but I find that to be the easiest way. And here again, I like my wax paper underneath of my hand. Draw a line down this way again. All I'm doing here is just giving a sample area to work in. Now this time, instead of the way we're going to change it out is instead of straight lines like this, we're going to go diagonal. Just very simple. See, I got that blotch at the beginning. I sometimes I get it at the end too. They can be very pretty and you can take advantage of those blotches. Put that blotch there intentionally and draw it and end it with a blotch. Go in and put other blotches on there. Get playful with it. <laughs> That's what makes it fun. I think I will put blotches. Don't worry if your lines are crooked. You may want to cut some dark scrap paper like I have here. Go to your stash and see if you have some sample pieces. It doesn't have to be card stock. And just get out your fine liner and, and play with it. You could even do this same technique with an ink pen or with a paint pen. I'm just using the fine liner because I like them. And that's the purpose of this series. Now, since I already have the blotches, I think I'm going to draw. I don't care if they don't meet. And look what I did there. Let's just follow it. Let's make it curvy like that. Let's say the material is has a little fold in it there. Let's make that blotch a little bigger. How about that? Now I've got a little build up of paint there, so let's take my my um, tissue, my towel, and just kind of clean that tip off. We don't want it to clog up there at the tip. So the paint line's in there. Now, this is just diagonal, plain lines. This is horizontal and vertical, plain lines. Example one, example two. I'm going to set this over and let it dry. And go back to this one. I doubt that these are fully dry. You can tell they're still wet. Dry these off a little. Okay, so let's flip this one over. So these are going to be bound vertically. So this will be the top. Now I have documentation there. You flip it this way. This will, of course, be the bottom, but I want my sample area to fall up here. So I'm just going to put this down like this my fine liner and draw a border around it. Now we're working with the diagonal 
here. I don't have that wax paper underneath my hand and I can feel the drag on the paper. I like my piece of wax paper. There. Okay. So now, let's do another diagonal here. I'm just going to, I demonstrated it on the previous example, so I'm just going to go in and fill this in. You know what I'm doing. Not being ultra particular about my beginning and ending dots. I kind of like them. Sometimes you want them, sometimes you don't. Stuff like that, just leave it. It just adds to the uniqueness of the piece. Now we're doing diagonals. You could turn your piece if you wanted. If you're comfortable working that way. Let's see. I think I put it this way and draw my diagonals this way. And this time I'm using, instead of going like this, I'm using more of a wrist section because here I was doing long lines. Here I'm just doing short lines. And I'm not too concerned about the different sizes of the boxes. If you do a lot of Zentangle, this will probably appeal to you more. If you like to doodle, this will be fun for you. And these are just little sample squares of different techniques that you can use on an art journal page. You won't always want to put these in a rectangle. You might just do this entire technique on the background of your page. Okay, so we have the same. We have this minus the obvious dots in here. We have the same diagonal squares as we did on this one. So what we're going to do on this one is the same thing that we did on this one and make it fancy. Only there'll be diagonal fancies instead of horizontal fancies. And we're, we're just adding little dots. Now if you do needlework and if you do a lot of crochet work or if you make lace, you might know these in needlework terms as picots, P-I-C-O-T-S. It's a French term, and it's called picot. If you're French, you may pronounce that differently. I call them little fancy dots. <laughs> fancy lace. And as you, as you become more comfortable with it, you'll get faster. And some of you may find it boring. Some of you may find it very meditative. If you like to doodle, you'll enjoy doing this. These dots just kind of fall on the line where where they may. I try to put them in between two boxes, like this is a box. Whoops, there's one in the center. You could do them in the center, too. In fact, let's do part of this in the center. I'll go back at the end of it. Well, no, I think I'll make that another example. We'll just leave that one as a reminder. <laughs> You don't want to get too many dots on the same in the same box area because then it becomes very hard to see what's going on. And as the boxes get smaller, you might want to do smaller dots. Or you may not too. Just go at it. Have fun with it. That is 
the important thing. See, I put two dots there. I think I'll make one big one out of it. And this is one of these techniques that when somebody receives a page or a tag or an ATC or is looking at a piece of art that you did and they see this, it's like that commercial, like you have flour roll over your face and you go, oh, I spent all day in the kitchen <laughs> because it's so intricate. Now, what I'm going to do on this one that I did not do on this one is I am also going to put my dots on the outside and that just adds a bit more fun to it makes it just a teeny bit more intricate if you like lace this is just a way to add not everybody is going to like the lace look this is, if you like shabby chic, if you like renaissance, if you like, um, I say garden art because it has somewhat of a trellis design. And I'm going to show you the ways you can alter this design once you've created it. But for now, we're just going through and demonstrating the different ways to build something like this. I wanted this video to be short, but I can see that they're going to be longer, but I'm going to leave them full-length videos because I think that it is, that it's necessary to demonstrate what I'm doing. So I showed you four examples. Now, when I put my cap back on, if I find it's a little bit harder to put this fine size 20 cap on but I hold I hold the bottle in my hand like this and kind of prop this needle up against my index finger and kind of the same way here and match up the two needles and you kind of have to get a feel for it it's not always easy once you get your needle in there just kind of go like that and that will clear out the paint in the needle and then screw it down now if you have a lot of thick paint or you know your paint is gloppy I would recommend you unscrew the cap go rinse it out in water I use either a lukewarm water or a cold water so I hope that you've enjoyed this demonstration of four examples of some techniques that you can have some fun with your fine liner and I will be doing a lot more of these. I will see you on the next page.